used. So our next um, debate focuses uh, which uh, DCDs are to be preferred. And first of all, I would like to welcome Ilhan Inchi from Zurich, who will give us the perspective on controlled donation of the circulatory death. Dear Chairman, dear members of society, thank you very much for uh, giving me this chance to speak in front of this unit. Uh, Audience, uh, the title is as uh, the chairman said, the control donation after cardiac death donors. <coughs> Unfortunately, I have no disclosures, I'm sorry about that. Said lung transplantation activity increases worldwide, reaching approximately 4,500 transplantations performed annually. So, it's the activity is increases. However, lung transplantation is still hampered by persisting problems such as organ shortage, early graft dysfunction, chronic lung allograft dysfunction, and morbidity related to long-term immunosuppression. Unfortunately, the main limiting factor to widespread application of lung transplantation is the scarcity of suitable donor organs and the demand for transplantable donor lungs are under the number of patients waiting for an acceptable donation. In the latest organ procurement and transplantation network annual data report, the overall lung donor utility rate was reported as 20%. And according to this report, lung waiting list mortality was 10%. In this slide, I bring you the latest urine transplant annual data report. As you see, for lung in the last nine year period, the use of lungs from disease donors increased from 25% to 32%. However, this increase in donor lung utility did not solve the problem in urotransplant countries. And this graph from the urotransplant the latest report also showed the mismatch between the waiting lists and the number of transplants performed. And under the red circle in the graph, you see the number of patients who died while waiting a suitable organ. And the ratio in urotransplant report was the waiting list mortality was 18%. Why do we have such uh, uh, low numbers of transplanted lungs? As you all know, compared to other solid organs, lungs are more fragile and sensitive, and there are also other reasons like direct trauma, resuscitation, maneuvers, neurologic pulmonary edema, aspiration of blood, and ventilator-associated ventilator trauma. In order to find a solution, for organ shortage, the transplant community tried to find out alternative sources. These are the use of marginal or extended criteria donors, sizes that reduce lung transplantation, live lobar transplantation, ex vivo lung perfusion in order to assess and recondition a questionable organ, and finally, donation after cardiac death donors. If you look back to the history of solid organ transplantations, we can see that the first kidney, liver, and lung transplantations were all performed using DCD donors. Since then, the definitions of brain that were established and donors who met brain that criteria were accepted. In 1992, Thomas Egan reintroduced the concept of DCD lung transplantations following a series of dog and rat experiments. This concept was based on the fact that the lung may remain viable for a certain period after death as a result of the oxygen reserve present in the alveoli. So the main concern regarding DCD is the warm ischemic time. However, it has become apparent that the lungs are more robust to ischemia than we all thought before. Actually, lung parenchyma is unique among all solid organs as it's 
oxygenation, it does not depend solely on blood supply. And the, for the lungs, ischemia is not equal to hypoxia or anoxia. So briefly, the lungs are ischemically privileged by a local storage of oxygen in their alveoli. Originally, four DCD categories were defined according to master classification. And the first two are uncontrolled donors and the category three and category four are the controlled uh, donors. We will hear later from Andreas, an uncontrolled DCD donor may occur when a person dies unexpectedly. And in these cases, the deceased person may become a potential donor if his or her organs can be adequately preserved in the body. In the, deep, in the controlled donation, we have the time to preserve, to make the uh, 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 ideal uh, things to, to proceed with the transplantation. Over the years, category five is added. This is called donation after euthanasia. Belgium is the pioneer in this category five donor. And in Leuven, as far as I read, it covers their 12% of their DCD transplant activity. In addition, Netherlands and Canada also created legal framework to, for, to perform DCD category five uh, don donation. With more lung transplantations performed, from category five DCD. In the future, it will become interesting to see uh, the, the different, the domestic difference bit among the DCD category five, category three, and also, and compare this with donation after brain death uh, transplantation. How do we select the donors and control? Uh, from control DCD, donor selects most centers apply internationally agreed DBD donor criteria. Extended criteria donors such as uh, over 65, smoking history of more than uh, 20 per year, ICU stay more than five days, abnormal chest x are accepted in some programs. An important issue is in DCD don donors is the definitions. I'm sure when I ask you all, you will say all different, you will give me just different answers in your centers. So the, the definition, as I said, of warm ischemic time differs among the centers. Some centers calculate warm ischemic time from the withdrawal of life-sustaining therapies to cold flush. Some of them start with the cardiac arrest to cold storage. Some of the centers start from the systolic blood pressure when it falls down to 50 millimeter mercury and then to cold, cold flush. So these are the time points also uh, suggested from the ISHRT uh, DCG registry report and also there are some intervals. The time period between withdrawal of life-sustaining therapies and cardiac arrest is, is defined as agonal phase and with the increasing experience uh, this time period is also increased. According to the ISHRT DCD, DCD registry report published in 2015 by Marcelo, this time period ranged from 30 to 180 minutes among the centers. We, in our center, we started also with 60 minutes, now we are using 120 minutes as an agonal phase. I thank to Dirk van Rendong from Leuven for providing me this slide and also a couple of slides, which I will show you later. He presented the ISHLT, actually the, the, the last ISHLT registry report in Orlando this April. And you see here the DCD interventions performed among the centers. These are the 22 participating centers who provided data to ISHLT DCD registry. And heparin is given in 50% of the donors. 91% of the patients were extubated. And two thirds of the cases received nasogastric tube as uh, to prevent gastric aspiration. And finally, the utility of EVLP, ex vivo lung perfusion, in this largest series was 15%. It was 12% uh, 
from the first report published in 2015 by Marcelo. Although countries like United Kingdom, Australia, Belgium, and Netherlands reached a high percentage of DCD donors, a continuous global underutilization is not noticed. In this slide, in 2018, uh, the Organ Procurement and Transplantation Network reported only 7% of lungs transplant that came from DCD donors. And now I refer to the, the, the latest registry report uh, from the ICHLT, and you see the activity of DCD, these are category two, increased from 3%, 1% in 2003 to approximately 16% in 2016. It is increasing, but it's not the, 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 the number that we want to see, still low. Before I come to the outcome data, I would like to mention in one sentence the advantage of DCD or DDD, uh, lung transplantation. As we all know, brain that itself leads to hemodynamic, metabolic, and neuroendocrine abnormalities resulting in neurogenic pulmonary edema. And I think this is the most of the, uh, the problems that we reject with lungs. We have some primary markers for early, mid, and long-term outcome in transplantation. So primary graft dysfunction, for example, can be used as an early. One and three years survival can be used for mid-term outcome, and five-year survival and both free survival can be used as long-term outcome. This systemic review and meta-analysis paper included 11 observational studies and there were in this paper there were 200 to 271 DCD cases compared to more than 200 2300 cases who underwent lung transplantation from uh, DBD donors and as you see there were no difference in primary graft dysfunction rate ICU stay and one and five years survival as well as freedom from both in this meta-analysis Again, I refer to the, uh, the largest uh, series, and it was uh, reported in, uh, this year in uh, Orlando. And five-year survival in the DCD registry showed no difference between DCD and DVD donors. Another long-term marker, bronchial obliterator syndrome or CLAT-free <coughs> survival, is there is also no difference between DCD and DVD uh, groups. This is an interesting data to present. Uh, we have here warm ischemic time defined and as nice as HLT as this is the interval three, which begins from withdrawal to the cold storage. And uh, there are three different uh, time periods, 30 minute, 30 minute to 45, and over 45, and, and uh, the one year survival, as you see, these time points did not, did not have any influence on the survival of, of the uh, recipients. Netherlands is one of the countries which has an excellent DCD program and over 30% of DCD lung donor utility rate. And this is a multi-center study from Netherlands uh, inclu which included 130 cases per arm and then they showed also no difference in the PGD, CLAT flea survival, and overall survival between these two groups. Although this paper is seven years old, already seven years old, I would like to share it with you. This paper published by Levy uh, reported the Australian experience with 72 recipients from category three uh, DCD donors, and 90% five-year survival reported from this series was the best published from such donors. In this part of my talk, I would like to say a couple of words about ex vivo lung perfusion and this the lung transplantation. In 2001, Steen from Sweden published the first successful lung transplantation from 
DCD category two donor with an uncontrolled donor after testing it in an EVLP system. And they transplanted the right side and the patient survived five years and died because of other reason like a system like a recent infection. But this paper stimulated all the centers, researchers in order to move forward you know, in this field. Selective use of EVLP is part of the DCD category three programs as well as category one or two programs in most centers. However, for category three, it is not essential or in other words, mandatory, as we have excellent results obtained without the routine use EVLP. In 2015, Toronto group compared 28 DCD lung transplantations with EVLP versus 27 without EVLP, revealing no difference in survival, but a significant short hospital stay and mechanical ventilation duration. Currently, the final reports of two prospective multicenter clinical trials involving DCD lung transplantation and ex vivo lung provision are awaited. EXPAND trial from Transmedics assessed the short term clinical outcome of lungs from extended criteria donors, including DCD category 3, that were normothermically uh, preserved. The other study, Novel Extension trial, this is from XVivo, aimed to evaluate. Uh, evaluate the outcome of DCD that underwent EVLP. So, in conclusion, the shortage of adequate organ donors remains a great challenge in clinical lung transplantation. Early and long term outcome in controlled DCD lung recipients is comparable to that of DVD lung recipients. And finally, use of lungs from controlled donors after cardiac death is a safe option for expansion of the donor pool. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.